Hi, my name is Jocko, and I'm an engineer on the Waza Streaming Cloud team. Today I'm going to be showing you how to properly formulate some Waza Streaming Cloud API requests. In this tutorial, we will set up a live stream in the Waza Streaming Cloud environment that uses a GoCoder SDK application as its source. We will specifically show you how to engage the proper steps to build and manage a live stream through our API. These steps include creating a new live stream from scratch, starting the live stream, checking the live stream state, stopping the live stream, and then finally, deleting the live stream. We will be using the Cloud Sandbox as our workspace. The Sandbox is a good environment to build and test code. The Sandbox provides accurate responses from the API without actually incurring charges against your account. I recommend using the Sandbox while you're building your code and then switching to the Live API once your code is ready for deployment. We will be building our requests using version 1.1 of the API. You can find the documentation here. I will be using an application called PAW to build the queries and explain to you how they are structured. As we stated, to start off, we need to create a new live stream. In cloud, a live stream is a workflow used to build a transcoder so that you can deliver your content all over the globe. In PAW, we're going to set up the initial create request. Creating a live stream requires a post request, so we're going to change get to post. All API requests will also require the base path. In our case, we're using the sandbox, so this is what the base path looks like. Now we need to add the API path. Since we're using version 1.1, this is what the path looks like. Then finally, looking back at our documentation, we want to look up how to create a live stream. If we click on live streams, you can see create a live stream is the first option, and you can see that this is a post request to the endpoint slash live streams. So we're just going to copy this. We're going to go here and add that to the end of our path. Next, we'll need to set up the authentication headers for the request. In a previous video, we showed you how to sign up for cloud and get access to the cloud API keys. You're going to need those to set the headers. We're going to add two headers to the request. The first one is called WSC API key. And this one contains the API key that you received. The second one is the WSC access key. And this contains the access key you received. Now your headers are properly set up to make a request through the API. At this point, everything we've set up is required to make any sort of request to the API. To review, we've set the request method, the request path, and the proper authentication headers. In order to complete the request, you need to describe the live stream to the Cloud API. To do that, we're going to add some JSON content to the body of the request. As you can see, there are several values in the request that we're passing in. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll go through them to describe their intention. The name is pretty obvious, it's just the name of your live stream. The transcoder's type describes how the live stream will be processed. In this case, you just want to use the, the term transcoded. Billing mode describes how you'll be billed for the transcoding. For this case, you'll just want to use pay as you go. The broadcast location describes where it is that your GoCoder application is going to operate from. In this case, we'll use US West California. If you go to the API documentation and you go down to broadcast location, you can see that there are several options provided around the globe. Pick the one that works best for you. Next, we determine if we want to record this stream. For this demonstration, we will not record it, but if you wanted to record it, you simply set this value to true. Since we're creating a Wowza GoCoder application, we're going to want to set the encoder to be Wowza GoCoder. The delivery method is going to be set to push. This means that the Wowza GoCoder application is going to push its content to the live stream. The target delivery protocol determines how we're going to deliver content to the end user. In this case, we're going to use HLS delivery. Use stream source identifies whether or not we're going to use a CDN to deliver the content to Wowza Streaming Cloud, and in this case, we want the value set to true. The aspect ratio width determines how wide the screen will be, and the aspect ratio height will determine how high the screen will be. In this case, the two settings are set for 1080p, which is effectively an HD stream. 
Last, we're going to set up some player configurations. We're not actually going to use the player during this demonstration, but these are good values to understand how to use. The player type determines what kind of player we can generate for you. In this case, we're just going to use original HTML5. The player responsive determines whether or not it will be presented in a responsive way. The player width determines the width if it's not responsive. And the hosted page determines whether or not we would generate a hosted page for you. You can look up the meaning of these settings inside the documentation. For now, we're just going to not use them. So we set them to some defaults. Now we're ready to execute our request. As you can see, we finally got a 200 response. If we look at the response data, there's a lot of data coming back here. For the sake of this tutorial, the only thing we really need to know is the ID. Now what I'm going to do is copy this ID out and I'm going to save it for later. We're going to end up using this in the future requests. All right, now that we have a live stream, we're ready to start it. You have to start a live stream in order to be able to use it in the cloud. To simplify it a little bit, we're just going to duplicate this initial request and modify it to generate our start request. So we're going to change the name of this one to start live stream. As you can see by duplicating it, we already have our headers set and the base path is in place for us. The only thing we need to do is add the necessary information in order to start the live stream. If we look back at our documentation and we look over here, we can see that there's a start live stream request. If you click on that, you can see that this is a put request. It requires the ID of the live stream, which we copied earlier, and then the start action added to the end of the request URL. So now we have the information we need to generate a start request. So if we go back to PAW, we're going to change the method to put. We're going to put the ID of the live stream that we created at the end of the request, and then we're going to add the start action to the end of the request as well. Also, the final modification we need to make to this request is to remove the body content. This request doesn't require any information to be sent from us to the API. So for that, we'll just delete the content. Now we can say we have no content being sent. And that completes the start request. We should now be able to execute the request. And you can see we got a 200 response back. And you can see that it returns to us the state, which is starting. Once you've requested a start action, it can take a few moments to get the transcoder up and running in the cloud. Because of this, you'll see a starting state on the live stream when you first request the start. In order to determine the current state of a live stream, we have to create the state endpoint request. To do that, we're just going to duplicate the start request. And modify it to be the state request. Once again, if we refer back to our documentation, we see down here that there's a state request. It uses the get method. Once again, we assign the ID of the request, and then the state is the action added to the end of the request. Now we have the information necessary to generate the state request. So if we go back to PAW, we can see our path is good. We even have our ID already available to us because we duplicated the start live stream request. We're going to change the action to state, and we're going to change the method to get. At that point, that's all we need to formulate this request, so we're going to execute it. And we can see we got a 200 response, and we now can see that the live stream has started. With the live stream started, it's ready to receive information from the GoPutter application. One thing to note when you're starting your live stream is that it may take some time for it to go from a starting state to a started state. You can't send information from your encoder to the live stream until it's actually in the started state. So you may want to check the state endpoint several times over a period of time. We recommend that you check the state endpoint every five seconds so as to not overload the API. If you do need a more rapid response, please don't use less than a second between each request. Once you're done with your live stream, you need to stop it. 
Stopping it is very similar to starting it, so we're just going to duplicate our start request and we'll change it to a stop request. At this point, all we need to do is change the start action to a stop action. Everything else for the request will remain the same. We execute this request. We can see that the state returned is now stopped. Stopping is pretty immediate. You don't need to check state in between the request and when it's finally stopped. At this point, you're no longer being billed for using the live stream. If you ever need to restart your live stream, we can just go back to the start request, make the request one more time. We see that starting is the state it's in. If we check the state, that was pretty quick. We could see it's already started. And then once again, we can stop it. We can see that stopped is the return state. If we just want one final validation and we check the state, we can see it's moved to stopped. One thing that many people forget to do is to remove their live stream once they're completely done using it. This step is really important because having too many assets in your account can impact the performance of the API. So the last step is to delete your live stream. We're going to go ahead and duplicate the start live stream request one more time. And we're going to call this one delete live stream. And then we're going to look at the documentation to see how it's formulated. You can see here under delete, it uses the delete method and you'll notice there's no action on the end, just the ID. So now we're going to update the pull request. We're going to change the method from put to delete, and then we're going to remove the action from the end. And this is all you need to do to delete a live stream from your account. We execute the request. You can see we get a 204 no content. No content ind indicates that there's no content left to represent that live stream, and the live stream no longer exists. If I were to attempt to do a live stream state at this point, we'll get an error back saying that the record was deleted. And that's it, a quick and simple way to create a live stream in the Wowza Stream Cloud API. This has been Jocko for Wowza. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.